Hello and welcome to Stories from India, a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I'm your host Narad Muni and I'm a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I'm a traveling musician and a storyteller. So the way I'm doing my job is by podcast. This week, we'll continue the story of Prahlad and his evil dad and evil aunt. If you haven't heard the previous episode, you definitely should because we left it on a cliffhanger. For the suspense to have any effect, it would really help if you know how we got there. The character this week has a very special power. In every fight, half of his opponent's powers are magically transferred over to him. This makes it impossible for him to be defeated, except maybe by sniper attack. We'll pick up the story right where we left off last time. Holika sat on a pile of logs with Pralhad on her lap. The whole pile of logs was on fire. Holika was protected by her magical firefighter's cloak. That was a gift from my dad, Brahma, the creator. Hira, the boy's dad, had also received a gift. It was that when he died, it would be by neither a human nor an animal nor a god. It would be neither day nor night. It would be neither indoors nor outdoors. He would not be killed by either astra or shastra which are Sanskrit words for projectile weapons or handheld weapons. He would not be killed on the ground or in the sky or in the water. The flames continued to rise around them. Hira watched on with glee. This was a win-win for him. If Vishnu showed up trying to protect Pralhad, this was his chance to have a showdown. He had no doubts in his mind that he'd be able to defeat Vishnu, thanks to the wish Brahma had granted. On the other hand, if Vishnu did not show up, the world was better off without one Vishnu devotee, even if that devotee was his own son. As the flames rose, he couldn't see much of what was happening. Inside, Holika was calm and undisturbed the magical cloak around her. Prahlad was calm too. You'd wonder why though. He was in the hot seat, quite literally. He continued to pray to Vishnu. Suddenly, there was a gust of wind. Where did that come from? wondered Holika. But not for too long. Because that gust of wind blew her cloak right off of her. In a physics-defying situation, quite like in the Final Destination movie series, the cloak miraculously wrapped itself around Pralhad. Yep, that wind was freakish, alright. Before Holika could do or say much, she burned. The flames that had taken a long time to build up now accelerated and quickly burnt Holika to a crisp. Hira had been expecting his sister, but when his son stepped out of the ashes instead, Hira was angry. He was a stereotypical villain, but even he loved his sister. He decided that she must be avenged. This had to be Vishnu's doing. Hira walked off in a huff. The next day, he decided to set up another trap for Vishnu. He poisoned the boy's milk. But just like in the old song about Rasputin, Pralhad drank it all up and sat up fine. It was still Vishnu behind the scenes. All the poisonous particles magically evaporated out of the glass of milk. This wasn't really physics-defying, 
because quantum mechanics tells us that it is not impossible for all the poison molecules to suddenly behave that way. It's just very unlikely. But as you have already seen, stretching the rules of physics is Vishnu's speciality. And so, Prahlad was quite safe. For now. Next, an angry elephant was brought over to trample the boy. People around the court were gasping at the sight of the great animal rushing towards the boy. Just then, yet another freakish thing happened. On a nearby tree, a squirrel was carrying a nut back home. As it jumped to its branch, the sun, which had been behind a cloud, suddenly peeked out. The sunlight glanced off of a nearby soldier's shield and reflected exactly into a tiny spot where the squirrel was, momentarily blinding it. The squirrel stumbled. The nut dropped out of its hands. As the nut rolled down on the ground, it slowed down and when it finally stopped, it nudged a loosely positioned piece of rock. The rock dislodged and rolled a short distance downhill. A very short distance but just enough to be in exactly the elephant's path. The elephant stumbled and fell before it could reach the boy. Prahlad muttered a silent prayer of thanks to Vishnu. Hira was losing it now. He next put Prahlad in a room full of snakes. But this was just a move out of ignorance. Vishnu and snakes have a special relationship. If Hira had actually bothered to do some opposition research, he'd have known how Vishnu rests on Sheshnag, the ultimate snake, and how in every avatar Sheshnag has aided him. I've covered more of Krishna's relationship with snakes in episode 11, The Boy Who Lived. There wasn't any furniture in the room and it looked like Hira intended to keep the door locked all night. So the snakes made a nice bed for Prahlad to sleep on. I must say Prahlad had guts of steel throughout this. Despite dodging one bullet after another, He was not in the least bit panicking. He had utter faith in Vishnu. Well, it was my coaching. It had to work. Hira had lost patience. Now, after trying to hurt his child in every way possible and failing every time, he finally did what he should have done at the very beginning. He had a conversation with Prahlad. He asked outright, Why do you still worship Vishnu? And Prahlad replied, Vishnu is all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing. Okay, then where exactly is Vishnu? asked Hira. How can he see everything when he's not even here? He's here, said Prahlad. Where? I don't see him, Hira asked. He's in everything around us, said the boy. Even in this pillar here? Sure, said Prahlad. Hira smashed the pillar with one hand. He was powerful enough to smash a marble pillar to bits with his bare hand. See? No Vishnu Hira started to say and stopped. Because when the tiny pillar cracked, From inside it emerged a huge creature, taller than any man and several times wider and broader than the pillar had been. This was quite a person. He had the body of a human giant and the head of a ferocious lion. Everyone was scared stiff. The lion man picked up Hira like he weighed nothing and dragged him to the door of the palace. 
he lifted Prahlad's father off the ground to about chest height and dug his sharp nails into Hira's body like it was made of butter. As Hira's breath left him, he realized what had happened. The lion man was neither a man nor an animal nor a god, but a combination of all three. He was neither on the ground nor in the sky. He was at the threshold of his palace and so was neither completely indoors nor outdoors. It was twilight and so it was neither daytime nor nighttime. And the lion man had used neither a projectile nor a handheld weapon. His wish had come true. The lion man was actually Narsimha, which literally translates to man-lion. This was Vishnu's fourth avatar and by far his fiercest. Prahlad, who had already shown extraordinary wisdom at his young age, went on to rule the kingdom. That's it for this story. Some notes on the show. As I mentioned last week, Holika is the reason we celebrate the festival of Holi. As it happens, this festival begins tomorrow and ends on Tuesday. If you haven't heard of it, it's a spring festival in India that involves a lot of colors. The night before Holi, which is basically tomorrow, people will make a bonfire, not in celebration of Holika's death, but to celebrate the divine intervention that allowed Prahlad to escape. At this point, we have encountered many of Vishnu's avatars. We have covered Matsya in episode 1, Unicorn Fish. Varaha in another episode. We have covered a small fraction of Ram and Krishna's stories. You can find links to all of these in the show notes. We still have several more to cover including Vaman, Kurma, Mohini, and Buddha. And we have to cover Parshiram in more detail as well. But by far, the Narsimha avatar is the most violent of Vishnu's avatars. I've linked some pictures of Narsimha on the site sfipodcast.com if you want to check those out. Prahlad himself went on to do a lot more after this. But his adventures in later life are worthy of an episode of their own. The character this week is the most powerful person ever. Sort of like Apocalypse from the X-Men movies. Vali from the Ramayana has a unique power. In every fight, battle or contest, Vali automatically receives half of his opponent's powers. Together with his own powers, which are certainly not negative, this makes Vali impossible to defeat. If you want to guess how he got this power, I'll give you exactly one guess. And as I'm sure you've got it right, it was my dad again, Brahma, who gave him this power. Vali was impossible to defeat if you faced him in battle. On the other hand, a well-placed sniper might be able to hurt him. And that is exactly what happened. But I'll not give away too many details since we have not reached that part of the Ramayana yet. Vali was a monkey king, ruler of the kingdom of Kishkinda, an older brother of Sugriv. Vali was easily the most powerful being on the planet. He defeated pretty much everyone including Ravan, the chief villain guy from the Ramayana. This is the point in the story where I make an entrance. I was passing through Ravan's court one day and I happened to carelessly refer to Vali as the most powerful being on earth. That was enough for Ravan to want to prove a point. I warned him against it, but Ravan went off to challenge Vali. Yes, Ravan had a lot of superpowers from Brahma, but the fight 
had only one possible outcome. Since Ravan lost half of those powers to Vali, even before the fight began. Vali made quick work of Ravan and held him captive in his, wait for it, armpit. Yes, he did. Ravan obviously tapped out at this move. He asked Vali for friendship and Vali gladly accepted. Vali didn't have many friends and badly wanted some. What happened after this is a story for another day. I'm also going to do an episode on Tara at some point. She was Wali's wife and had just as much, if not more, interesting backstory. That's it for this week. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at sfipodcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. Thanks to all you listeners for your continued support. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Next week, we'll go back into the world of Akbar and Birbal. We'll see how one can stay warm despite being in the middle of a freezing lake all night. We'll also see what the term slow cooker really meant in medieval India. The character next week is the sister of Ram and Lakshman. Most people are unaware of her and for a good reason. She does not appear in most versions of the Ramayana. I'll see you next week.